everyone. Welcome back inside the UC Health Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. Team reporter and host Sydney Jones here. And coming up on today's episode, we'll hear from head coach Nathaniel Hackett as he reflects on Sunday's loss. Plus, I'll have an injury update and Broncos lead writer Eric Delala joins the show for a game recap. All that and more coming up. First and foremost, this week on Broncos Now, we are giving away a $100 gift card to the Denver Broncos team store. Make sure to enter for a chance to win at denverbroncos.com under the podcast tab and click on Broncos Now. Now for the top news of the day, we heard from head coach Nathaniel Hackett today as the Broncos now sit at three and eight following their 23 to 10 loss to the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. He detailed what his message to the team is now at this point in the season. You know, we need to continue to look at ourselves individually. Starts with me, uh, go to the coaches, the players to see how we can improve. It's not just one guy. It's, it's a good Everybody, everybody's got to get better. Everybody's got to play better. Um, we're obviously not happy with what the outcome was yesterday. We can play better and we're a better football team than that. And uh, we got to uh, continually get better across the board. Coach Hackett also went on to talk about Russell Wilson's recent struggles and what might be causing them. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, it is, there is some uh, semblance of newness with this whole group and we've had a lot of changes throughout the offense with different uh, people that have been out there playing with him um, and we need to get him you know the confidence back to be able to make the plays that he can make um, but he's uh, you know he's out there and he's fighting every single play you know I give him so much credit you know he's taking a bunch of hits um, and it's because he's trying to do everything he can to make a play so I appreciate that on how he's doing that and everybody's got to play better around him. And last but not least, as the Broncos sit at three and eight, Coach Hackett detailed some of his frustrations and what his message to the fans is. I mean, nobody's as frustrated uh, as I am. <laughs> you know, this is not where we wanted to be at this this time in the season. None of us thought it was going to be like that, and that responsibility is fully on me. Uh, I want to be the one that uh, can do everything to help this football team because we as a group have to come together and find a way to win a football game. And uh, we can't uh, play the way that we played last week, uh, the, yesterday and expect to win a football game. So it starts with me from the preparation, practice preparation, every single thing that we do. Um, I'm the most frustrated. I think our fans are great. I mean, they want to win just like we all do. So, I, I mean, I don't blame them for being frustrated. And uh, for me, all I know is to work put my head down with our staff. I believe in the staff, believe in these players, and uh, we got to get better plays, better execution across the board. And as we wrap up the top news of the day, let's take a look at today's injury report. Both fullback and tight end Andrew Beck and linebacker Dakota Allen suffered hamstring injuries in Sunday's game and will be day to day. Plus, Coach Hackett said they're hoping to get running back Mike Boone back this week and will start his clock to return from IR. And outside linebacker Randy Gregory's status is still up in the air, and Coach Hackett said he might need some more time. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio is Broncos lead writer Eric Delala for a game recap. Eric, thanks for joining me again this week, per yeah, usual. you got it. Um, Eric, I feel like every Monday we come in here and unfortunately say the same thing <laughs> week after week. You know, another disappointing loss to the Panthers on Sunday. You know, this time, however, it was a, a little different. You know, normally we're in here talking about close games. These games coming down to the wire it really wasn't the case yesterday. Seemed like this offense, you know, they did have a lot of missed opportunities. So just to start overall, kind of what was your, what were your main takeaways from the offensive performance? Yeah, you're right. Not really close yesterday and yeah. kind of disappointing because you look at the Panthers, you see a, a three and eight football team, obviously, mm -hmm. before yesterday's game. Sam Darnold making his first start, um, a defense that has some playmakers, but still you know, gave up a decent number of points. And right. to get, I don't want to say blown out because the Broncos did cut it mm -hmm. um, to 23-10 late in the game, but it did not feel particularly competitive at times, especially in the second half. And Russell Wilson kind of mentioned that at the end of the game or after the game, he said, mm -hmm. the whole game has to matter. We have to be dialed in and, and caring about the outcome of this game, the whole game. You know, yeah. no matter what the score is. Um, and so that stood out to me as kind of a, you know, maybe that suggests to me that maybe guys were not kind of toward the end of the game were not as engaged as they could have been. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the offense and the missed opportunities, you're right, there were several chances. I think the biggest one, of course, was there was a muffed punt there in the first half. The Broncos had a chance, um, I believe, at that point to tie the game up. Mm -hmm. And they settled for three. Um, There's another opportunity where the Broncos have it down uh, in that side of the field, 
right after Latavius Murray's 52 yard rush. Right. Um, one of the bigger plays of the season for the Broncos and definitely their biggest running play of the year. And instead, Russell Wilson hit from behind as he's throwing. Um, the ball gets dislodged by Brian Burns, who, Sydney, we talked, he could not have an impact like Max Crosby had for the Broncos to win. Yeah. He was maybe better than Max Crosby <laughs> was a week before. So right. um, those were just a couple of missed opportunities. But again and again, the Broncos just, they struggled offensively. They came out of the, um, you know, out of the, at a halftime, scripted their first few plays, right. still couldn't find any success. We believe went three and out there. Mm-hmm. And I think 12 drives and just two where they scored points and obviously just 10 total points. So uh, not enough on the offensive side. Yeah. We saw the offense, again, continue to struggle on to convert on third down. Eric, you know, converted just four of 14. You know, we, we heard Russell Wilson say after the game yesterday that this team is just really inconsistent. You know, they need to get losing out of their system. Why do you think maybe this team hasn't really been able to improve week after week? Well, I, I do think, especially offensively, it's hard when you don't have Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler and Javante Williams. But there is a difference between being in the top 10 in mm-hmm. offense and being, you know, dead last in the league in scoring. And yeah. so you can say, hey, we don't have these guys and it's been difficult to integrate new players in every week. But that's still, in my mind, at least not not an excuse for being last in the league in scoring. You've still got to find a way to, heck, even if, you know, many people have said it this year, if you could score 18 points a game, obviously it wouldn't have been enough yesterday. And yeah. it's a, the, not quite a true narrative because for sure. opponents would probably change how they played if you were scoring more. But yeah. um, it just gives you a sense of, of where the Broncos would be. And so, you know, whether it is injuries, whether it's um, still trying to get comfortable in this system, uh, whether it's turnovers at inopportune moments for the Broncos. I mean, it's been a little bit different game to game, yeah. uh, but but yesterday it, it was third down again, um, and it was really every quarter of the game. I mean, Russell Wilson was asked at the end of the game or after the game how, you know, how disappointing was that third quarter, and he said, look, it's not just about the third quarter. It's got to we got to be better in the first quarter. We got to be better in the second quarter. We got to be better the whole game. Right, yeah. And so, um, you know, if it were just one thing, Sydney, I think it'd be easier – to kind of put your finger on it and to fix it. But clearly there's kind of a bunch of different factors. You mentioned Latavius Murray a little bit earlier. He had that 52 yarder by far, uh, you know, the longest run of the season for the Broncos. He finished with I think 93 rushing yards, 92 or 93. It seemed like he was a bright spot on the offense. Does that give you, you know, confidence moving forward that maybe they can get this run game going a little bit? Yeah. I mean, yesterday, 121 yards, 6.4 yards per carry. Uh, That's good. That's really good. Um, and Latavius Murray, I think it actually was his second highest average in a game where he had at least 10 carries. Mm. You're right, 92 yards, yeah. uh, 7.1 per carry. Obviously, a lot of that's helped by the 52-yarder, but I still thought he was productive. There were, you know, he got some runs off the Panthers. I think they need to continue to emphasize the running game. I think you need to be careful of how much you run the football with Latavius Murray just because he is an older back. I think mm-hmm. they need to try to keep him fresh. But, right. yeah, in the game that – I mean, it was it was a seven point game at halftime, and even in the third quarter, um, you know, just a, a fourteen point game. Right. I think maybe the Broncos got away from the running game a little bit, um, and maybe just could commit to that a little bit more. It's going to be key for the Broncos to find a win at some point here. Well, Eric, looking at this defense's performance. Not their best day either, unfortunately. Nope. We saw the run defense really struggle again. Panthers running back, uh, Devontae Foreman, he rushed for 113 yards. was pretty physical out there. What do you think really needs to be the focus of that group this week and moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, a commitment to continuing to stop the run. It's not going to get any easier against the Ravens. Um, people are going to challenge you to stop the run until you show that you can do it. Mm-hmm. Broncos did that a little bit. And, and listen, I get that it's tough to, you know, Stopping the run, you're you're putting your body on the line. I get that that's tough to do when it seems like you know you don't have much of a chance to win a game yeah. when you are three and seven and becoming three and eight. I, I get that that's difficult, but these guys are are paid for a reason. They're out there for a reason. That's to play good mm-hmm. defense, and, and it's got to start with stopping the run. You know, if you're a pass rusher like Draymond Jones, yeah. like Jacob Martin, like Nick Benito, and and you are wanting to get sacks and kind of add to your, you know, the flashy things that people pay attention to. I think we've heard this team say you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. And that starts 
by stopping the run. So they've got to figure out a way to do that. But yeah, whether it was the run game, um, giving up explosives in the passing game, obviously there was the touchdown from Sam Darnold to DJ Moore uh, early in the game. And then Sertan gave up another deep play to Moore later in the second half. Um, I think Justin Simmons put it best when he said, we didn't stop the run. We didn't stop explosives. You're not going to win football games doing that. And so this was, you know, maybe probably the worst performance of the year from the defense. And um, I don't think anybody's feeling very good this morning. Looking, you know, at the Broncos pass rush specifically, Eric, you know, they haven't really been the same in recent weeks. I mean, this was their first game this season that they failed to record a sack. Yeah. And uh, I believe last week against the Raiders, first time without multiple sacks. So uh, there's a clear delineation here of when Bradley Chubb got traded. And, you know, I know that George Payton has faith and still does have faith in the Broncos, young pass rushers and Barry Browning and uh, Nick Benito obviously traded for Jake Martin, Jonathan Cooper, uh, Randy Gregory has not been able to come back yet. And I wonder if the Broncos are just being a little cautious with him given the record. And um, you know, you're unlikely to go on a run here to the playoffs nine and eight at this point might not even get it done. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they do things with Randy Gregory here coming up, but you're right. Since Bradley Chubb was traded, the pass rush has not been the same. Uh, Draymond Jones, who was really effective early in the year, does not have a sack kind of over the last or since uh, since Bradley Chubb was traded. So they've got to find a way to get that going because there were definitely times yesterday where Darnold just had too much time. Um, and no matter how good Pat Sertan is, no matter how good parts of your secondary are, if the quarterback just has all day back there, he's going to find a way to make a play, going to find an open man. Um, and it just puts too much pressure on the back end of your defense. So if it's bringing more pressure, which, you know, against the Raiders, that's what Ajiro Evero did. And unfortunately, that then leaves you fewer players in coverage. So that creates its own issues. But right now they've got to find some sort of solution because, you know, it, you know, we'll see about Randy Gregory, but right now they've got the guys that they've got and they've got to find a way to make it work with those guys. For sure. Yeah, well, they will head back to the drawing board this week. Another road game this weekend in Baltimore. I'll look forward to that. Eric, appreciate your time always. Yeah, of course. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in today and every day. And don't forget, make sure to enter for a chance to win that $100 gift card to the Denver Broncos team store. You can find the form on denverbroncos.com slash podcast slash Broncos Now. I will see you all right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for another episode. See you all then.